How's everybody doing? How are you two doing today? Good. Yes. How are you? I'm doing very, very well. Happy to be here. Thank you guys for joining me. Part of my headphones, but I want to make sure that, you know, there's no crazy noise in here. It's all good. I watched the main event and it is a fun movie. Being a wrestling fan, I loved how it was just super silly and it was dope because normally in those movies growing up for the past 40 years and being a wrestling fan for all of those years, we don't see us, you know what I mean? So I love seeing us. How was this experience for you, Tashina, playing? I don't, even though, you know, uh, you played a grandma, I don't see you as a grandma. So how was that for you? I'm happy that everybody's saying they don't they don't see me as a grandma because neither do I. <laughs> but I I um uh, I like the fact that I'm a new age grandma because I'm actually I'm 50 and I have friends that are that are my age that who are now grandmas because we they had children early so you know in the 80s that yeah. you know I, that was a, during the time where a lot of my friends were having children at an early age so a lot of them are grandmas now and I think this film conveyed a, a, a different type of nucleus family, family nucleus rather. And I like the fact that it showed uh, a, a black woman who's, who's strong, who's confident, but who also gives confidence and who also teaches her grandson that he could be confident and who also is, is physically, you know, strong as well, yeah. which we are as black women. So for me to be able to play a, a, a role like that, and of course with the amazing Seth Carr, you know, it was, a, it was a no brainer. I think this movie conveys a lot of wonderful moments, a lot of, um, you know, it's kind of uh, nostalgic for me too. You know, when I was little, I used to watch uh, WWF back then, mm. <laughs> back then and uh, Kung Fu and Soul Train. Those are the three things yeah. on Saturday. So. Uh, this movie, I, I'm really, I was very happy to be a part of it. Where are you from? Wait, what city are you from? Jamaica, Queens, New Jamaica. York, baby. Okay, so we did the same thing. You were Channel 5, Channel 5, then Channel 11. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Channel 11 was, was it W-O-R, W-W-O-R, something like that? It was like a W-P-I-X, Channel 9 was okay. W-W-O-R. I still Okay, remember. okay, okay. I'm like, I'm like, I, 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 like things start fading away. But right. yeah, I mean, I literally can remember eating cereal sitting at my, my kitchen table and watching wrestling. I loved Ar Andre the Giant. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he was the one who got me interested in the whole wrestling thing. Rowdy mm -hmm. Rod Piper yeah, and, yeah. you know, it's crazy. Hulk Hogan. Exactly. <laughs> now, Seth, you've yeah. been out here working, my brother. And like, I, when I got this interview and I went and did my research, I was like, I saw that, I saw that, I saw that. And you have this um, skill where you can really blend in and become characters. And that's a dope skill for an actor to have. For you, what was it like getting this role and having this big responsibility to carry this movie? Um, it, was a, it was an experience because I've never been the main character of a movie before. So the whole, everybody, everybody was very nice and like very professional on set and fun to work with and everybody's personalities was great. And me just being like doing the character and stuff, being two characters, like I had to adapt to be the shy person at the beginning of the movie that only talks to really his friends and stuff. And I put on the mask and I become this confident person with like a strength and super speed and all that stuff so it was just a fun experience and a great experience how was it like sort of setting up some of the superhuman strength things like when the dresser falls down on you spoiler alert how was it like uh filming those that was it was it a rig and once you saw the finished product did you was like oh wow that's me <laughs> yeah but like like they had the dresser like fall down so somebody had like a they were pulling it back and they told mm. him when to pull it and then pull it, the let, like let it loose and then pull it again and stuff. And then like just seeing myself on TV, it's just like, wow, yeah. that's me. So it's like, I did that. <laughs> I'm, you're talking about seeing yourself on TV, young brother, but you were a young Killmonger and Black Panther. <laughs> Hello. Yo, what was Hello. it like seeing yourself on the big screen? <laughs> that was just a crazy experience. All, all they, they had like, 
like this big sound stage. I remember where they were filming like on one side, and then they could film like on another side, and then not hear each other. Like it was just huge. And then them, they made like the waterfall scene. They made that. Like they created their own waterfall with a water system, and it was just crazy. Like there's so many people on set and stuff. It was just. Huge. We had a great crew too. Yeah. You know, we did this movie in Vancouver. And there was a lot of technical, like, uh, you know, I just would sit on the side and watch all the work that Seth had to do. And really this, 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 this young man put in a lot of work for this film, a lot of work. And he was very committed, but we had a great crew. You know, you can't have a good movie without a good crew. So uh, everybody just busted their butts on this film. Jay Harris did an amazing job directing it. Um, he had a great vision for it. We sat, we had dinner. Remember we first started the movie, we all sat down and just got to know each other and kind of discuss the the that that type of family nucleus that we had because that was new for me as well. You know, we did not talk about the interracial thing. We didn't have to Jay was like, you know, we're not gonna mention it. And that's like I kind of like that because we have a lot of uh, uh um uh, what is the proper word for it? The mixed children, uh, uh, what, biracial children, mm -hmm. um, and and we have a lot. Of, uh, I think it's it's important that they see themselves as well. So this movie covers a, a lot of that. It covers um, love. It covers you know the even the the uh, distance in age. You know you have a grandmother who is still respected by her grandson and her yeah. grandson still looks towards her for information and for love and that comfort that his mother wasn't there to give him. So that's what grandmas do. That's what grandmas are there for. So grandma is not so much the age, it's the spirit in which yeah. that, that person is holding. And that was the thing that I really loved about the movie as well, because I, my mother worked all, all day. So yeah. I stayed with my grandma. So seeing that, dynamic was beautiful to see on screen because we don't have enough representation for broken families and families that are just a little bit different. You know what I mean? So that was dope. Not at uh, all. That's so as a wrestling fan, I'm really just curious to know when you do a movie like this, is there like, hey, we're going to do this movie. It's going to come out around WrestleMania and you guys get to come to WrestleMania. Is that something that sort of got pulled off the table with the current pandemic that's going on? Uh, yeah, definitely with like all these things going around and like they don't really want people in huge crowds and stuff now just want to stay at home and be to them like don't want to spread it even more and stuff. So, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, it would have been great to go to the WrestleMania things and see everybody and stuff. But hey, if pe people need to stay safe and stuff, I don't want to see anybody that I know in the hospital. So. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Quick question for you, Seth. What was it like walking through those ropes and getting into the ring? That was just a crazy experience. I mean, every time I walked into the ropes, it was just like, oh. I mean, like I knew that I was filming a movie, but it still just felt unreal. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gene, I want to talk to you about because you are a legend, right? If people consider you a legend, you've been a part of my life since 1986. I'm a huge fan of Little Shop of Horrors. Uh uh. <laughs> being being in the public eye and being loved for that long of a period, how does that? How do you wear that? How do you hold that responsibility? That sort of love from people who you don't really know. I hold that responsibility very dearly, but I also share that responsibility. And what I mean by that is, if I, I'm just like a walking, you know, help guide. If somebody asks me a question or they have any kind of question that they need answered about show business and my experience in it, and if I can help, I'll help. Um, I, I I always say God has blessed me to do what I love doing. I wake up every day, no matter whether or not I'm on quarantine, no matter whether or not I'm sick or I, I can't get to work or I, I am blessed to wake up having the ability to do what I love doing. Mm -hmm. And I always um, am grateful for that. And for people, you know, I consider myself as a survivor. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a... Right. I, I don't, you know, you know, people talk about stars and celebrities and all that stuff. I mean, put whatever name you want to put on it, but I, I, I'm a survivor and I've seen a lot of people come and go, but um, entertainment is very important. The arts, 
are very important. As you see, you know, having Seth here with us, this young man is not even <laughs> a third of his age of what he could be. And here he is making moves like this and playing roles like this that will be a part of his legacy. So yeah. God has blessed me to leave and have a, a build up a legacy of work that people can watch for years to come. And, and I, I'm very grateful. I got, I got another question for you because you well just more of a statement because you kind of got me in trouble oh uh, no what when, happened when the neighborhood first came out right uh it started to trend about it was i think it was the uh do white people use washcloths yeah 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 and at that time i was uh doing an interview with um uh, viola davis and liam neeson so i was like you know what this would be a really good question to ask them because it's funny <laughs> Because it was for widows. Oh my God. So That's I, I, a random question. It was just such a random things. question. But but they had a shower sex scene. So I was like, that's fair. Do they do these wash Okay, clothes? okay. So you had something to okay right. refer to. Okay, that's good. That's fair. <laughs> so I asked that question to Steve McQueen, the world of renowned super serious director. And he got so upset with me. What? Yeah, and, and they cut my tapes. But it but was uh, a fair question. Uh, it was a fair question. But everyone else loved it. Like it, Viola yeah. and Liam loved it. It was a fun question. But he just was like, "Yeah, you can't control stuff like that. You know, you never know when a you, you'll hit a sore spot or something. A lot of people don't know how to convey when they're uncomfortable. Yeah. And and that's what I love about uh, the neighborhood and the roles that I that I played on. We you know you you're gonna we we should incite thought. You know, we should have dialogue. We should talk about it. You know, the black kitchen table is completely different from the white kitchen table. The conversations are different. Everything is different. But why don't we take a moment through entertainment and through telling our stories? Why don't we share stories so that we can learn more about each other? Absolutely. I, I know we got to go. So I want to get one quick question in. Uh, Seth, when you do a, sh a movie like this, do you do research to see like what your co-stars have done? And Tashina, what was the reaction the first time you showed your daughter Little Shop of Horrors? My daughter loved Little Shop of Horrors, so yes, but she likes she liked Martin better. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I do like look at like my like um, my craft and stuff. Like before the movie, I like I watched some like videos of like wrestling and like how people do and stuff and how it's gonna be and how I need to like talk. Like I gotta be a wrestler, right? And uh, yeah, I do look at some of the stuff. So I, I've seen Martin before, so. Yeah. Yay! I watched it with my grandma. Like a That's right. Stuff. See, well, your gra you and your grandma watching your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Was it hard for you to come up with the voice, Seth? Uh, well, they, well, in post-production, they actually okay. pitched it. So they pitched it, but like, I had like a voice. They wanted me to kind of like talk like The Rock a little bit, like how he kind of like, smooth things in and then he went da, 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 you know but um yeah all right cool well bob's let saying we have to go i want to thank you guys for taking the time to chat with me i appreciate you, you can't wait it. to talk to you guys again you got your name is pronounced zilla right zilla valentine we did right. an interview seven or eight years ago in new york city it was fun to sit down and talk name. to you. Yeah. Zilla, because I, I named Tisha's first son Zen with the X. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure I pronounce it right. Thank you awesome. so much, Zilla. Thank you. I love talking to you guys. You guys have a great time and be you safe. Got it. You yes. got it. You do the same. Be blessed. Thank you. Godzilla. Yes. Zilla, bitch. Godzilla. No, no, no. no that's my thing.